out that chaga foam. Ah, I swear my, um, this is Bustello Espresso with one of the packets of the chaga elixir in it. When I just do the Bustello um, Espresso in the morning, it's just like plain black. But when you put in the chaga elixir, it makes like a, a foamy creaminess to the coffee. It's really good. Here's my little, I don't think I ever officially did a fall home decor tour. I know those are popular. So here it is, my candy corn candle, my Trader Joe's pumpkin. <laughs> Not so big into the, into the home decor. But, beverage update. You guys know I am a huge fan of the sweet leaf drops and the little stevia drops that I sweeten things with, like coffees and whatnot. You guys have been recommending their water drops and I finally tried the peach mango. Thank you so much for recommending these to me. They are amazing. Th they're, they're pretty sweet. Three squeezes and 32 ounces is perfect. Sorry, that gnat. There's a little gnat who has moved in here and I, I swear I can't get rid of him. Uh, three squeezes into 32 ounces of water is perfect. This is, this is really good though. Peach mango. I'm interested to try some of the other flavors though. It says, suggest, suggested use, squirt to taste. But yeah, that is uh, that's a little beverage update. Oh, another beverage update from my iHerb haul. Let's see if I can find it. Remember I got this Barleen's Greens chocolate, rich, creamy, and delicious chocolate. This is really amazing. One scoop, 25 calories, one gram of sugar. It's like a bunch of pulverized, like, plants and chocolate. I know it sounds weird. It's got cocoa powder, carrot juice, barley grass, raspberry juice, pomegranate juice, goji, parsley, whatever. It is really rich and creamy and very nice. I put this in um, almond milk with only one stevia packet and it is really chocolatey, rich, sweet. It tastes like a brownie. It's so good. You guys have got to try it. If you like hot chocolate, and um, you, you know, you're avoiding dairy for what, whatever reason, this is a wonderful substitute. I got it on iHerb, I, I recommend it. iHerb purchase that I will not repurchase. Another update, I mean, I've been using it. These Beyond Fresh, um, this is the Orchard Fresh. I have a, like a tropical medley I also got. Um, I've only tried the Orchard Fresh, which is like a mixture of apple, lemon, cranberry, raspberry, blueberry, strawberry, pomegranate, banana, pineapple, grape. It's basically dried out fruits that have been pulverized into a powder. One scoop, 20 calories, um, zero grams of sugar. Uh, the flavor on this is really subtle and underwhelming, so I don't think I'll be repurchasing this. Um, I was hoping that it would taste good mixed with the PB2 peanut butter powder and kind of be like a peanut butter and jelly type flavor. No, it's it's really it's really subtle. I don't recommend those. I mean, I think people add them to smoothies or whatever, but just not fruit. Um, I was hoping it would flavor flavor things, but what is? I'm kind of dressed up like a bat this morning. <laughs> I'm wearing my um my Fabletics shirt. I love this thing. It's like the perfect sun protective shirt with the with the hands and whatnot. But yeah, today I have a pretty busy day of stuff going on and then I've got errands to run and so I'll take you guys along with that. But before I do that, last week I told you all about my closet situation um, and you're probably like thinking, oh, show us an update. Yeah, right. As if, I, as if I've made any progress. Well, I made a, 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 micro, a micro step of progress. I'm really slow. I mean, I'm a party of one, so I don't have, I don't have, you know, a crew or anything and my my biggest complaint in life is that there just aren't enough hours in the day um but really i made i made zero progress from where we last kicked off i have a ladder so that's that's a step in the right direction to help me get this one down and then i also bought where did i put it in here 
to encourage myself to keep going in honor of breast cancer. Well, not really, I guess. Um, this is DAP to fill in the holes. And it goes on pink, and then when it's completely dry, it turns white. It has this little uh, mesh that comes in. If you have a really big hole, like uh, the one they're showing here, you can put the mesh on and put the DAP over it. And then it has this little spatula. So I will be doing that. And then if you missed last week, the plan is to hang up this little uh, birch tree wallpaper, uh, self-adhesive peel and stick non-permanent wallpaper that I got on Amazon. It's really cute. So yeah, converting my closet, converting my closet into something functional since I don't, since I don't buy like tons of clothing. <laughs> um, oh, but speaking of, um, iHerb. I also got these on iHerb. I have used the, this is the Physician's Formula BB Cream, SPF 30, water resistant, and their mineral powder, SPF 30. I think it's SPF 30. Yeah, SPF 30. Um, I have used this in the past. Uh, a long time ago I used it. It is, it is not my favorite. I prefer L to MD, um, and I currently prefer over L to MD and this, the, the color science one. But this is not bad, um, and I've been trying out their mineral powder as well. I'm going to review these for you guys in a video, but you, because you all, I think, had, had mentioned these, but... You can get them on iHerb, and they are really, really good, bottom line, overall, and, um, you know, pretty affordable and low risk, and I actually actually think the BB cream is, uh, is pretty nice. I don't know about the powder as much. Yeah, actually, I like the powder. I don't know. Stay tuned for the vid. Well, hey, guys. What's up? It is late afternoon, and I am headed out to run my my weekly errands. I forgot to mention this morning, the ab routine I was doing in the beginning of the video, that is a new blog Lottie's video. She came out with a new video and you basically write the alphabet uh, to work your lower abs. When I started the video, I was like, oh, this isn't too bad, oh my gosh. By the end of the video, I was like, X, Y, Z. <laughs> it is a good one. Very, uh, very quick and effective. I am, I'm still feeling it. It was, uh, it was effective. I love her routines. She also has a newer inner thigh one. That is, that is killer. Uh, it's like a long plie squat one. Yeah, love, love doing those in the morning to, to wake myself up. Speaking of morning, I put you guys in a new location this morning. I don't know if you realize that. You were in my linen closet for my skincare routine. I came to the conclusion, I was like, well, you know, I'm not really washing, since I'm not washing my face, you know, using the salicylic acid face wash in the morning, um, there's really no reason for me to be positioned so closely to, in such cl close proximity to the sink. Um, and so I, I moved you guys in the linen closet, so I don't know how how that worked out this morning, but it was a little bit easier as far as positioning things for me. So hopefully, hopefully that works out, but that, that's yet another uptick of not, uh, not assaulting my stratum corneum with another, with another water layer each morning. But you guys, I'm sort of on a book, a book lull right now. I finished, uh, the two library books I was previously reading, the snake oil science book. Many of you have said you started reading it and are enjoying. And I also finished uh, Little Fires Everywhere. And I'm kind of pissed at my library right now. It's like, calm down, don't act so entitled. Um, I have several books that I really want to read that are on hold at the library, and they're taking their sweet time getting them in. <laughs> Listen to me. But the reason I'm more annoyed at my um, library is um, my library in my neighborhood was damaged uh, by Harvey a year ago, and they are, it's really taken forever for them to recuperate the damages from that, and I imagine resources and, and that sort of thing for libraries, you know, restrict, you know, they have to whatever budget, etc. 
Um, so they had this like temporary location for picking up and dropping off in the YMCA that was very convenient. And they were open on the weekends because the YMCA is open on the weekends. Well, they changed the temporary location to another place, which is close to me, but it's now closed on the weekends. And so I, it's annoying because, well, I, it's, it's the ultimate first world problem. Oh, I can't get my free books on a, on a, you know, six days a week now. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that really throws throws a wrench in my routine because I don't have much time during the week. I have no time during the week really to sneak over to the library and pick up books when they come in and take them back when they're they're due. So that's kind of a pain. But uh, yeah, I also have I have a few paperback books that I got from one of those little take a book leave a book things. Do you guys have those in your neighborhood? They're awesome. They're like these little birdhouse looking things that you can leave a book behind and uh, take one. So I, I like that because I impulsively purchased the Sharp Objects book at the grocery store when we were watching it and I wanted to know what the heck was going on. I don't normally buy books. I know, shocker. Something I never thought I would say in my entire life. If you had asked me when I was seven, um, that, you know, if you had told me when I was seven that I would stop buying books, I probably would have slapped you. Now, I wasn't, I wasn't really a, that kind of seven-year-old, but I would have been shocked. Um, but it is one thing that I have changed in, about myself probably in the past 10 years is I just stopped buying books because I came to the conclusion that I never, like books that I read for enjoyment, I never reread them. I, you know, I want to move on to the next, next book. There's so many books to read. I never reread them. And so I, they just end up taking up space and collecting dust. So when I do buy a book, I like to give it away after I finish it. But I don't buy, I don't buy books anymore. It saves a lot of, a lot of money. I use the library. Our library here, here in Houston, library system is wonderful. My complaints aside with the with the relocation and whatnot, so. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of in a book lull right now. But I was reading an interesting article in one of the dermatology journals that came out recently um, about uh, they, this group surveyed uh, like 500 and something uh, patients, uh, cosmetic patients seeking minimally invasive cosmetic procedures in dermatology, things like lasers, Botox, fillers. Um, Etc. Things that I've talked about in my cosmetic skincare, cosmetic Q and A, cosmetic procedures playlist. If you have any questions, but it's really interesting. You know, people, um, at least in the study, people largely report that they are motivated. And you know, I've always emphasized this in a lot of my videos. They're not really motivated by um, to seek cosmetic procedures because of. Um, like commercials, you know, or, or at least they don't perceive themselves as being influenced by commercials and media to seek cosmetic procedures. They are motivated to seek the procedures to feel better about themselves, you know. I mean, we go out shopping and buy, like, crap because we see it on TV and we're like, ooh, I gotta have that, ooh, I gotta have that. Um, there often isn't, like, like, much higher thought that goes into it. I mean, sometimes there is, like, oh, I need shoes in order to walk, but you know, for the most part, it's like, ooh, I've got to have that. Ooh, I've got to have that. But cosmetic, minimally invasive cosmetic procedures, people really, they really seek them because at their current state, um, you know, currently they feel poorly about themselves and they want to feel better. One of the things that I found most interesting about the study is patients with rosacea um, saw you know, the treatment, a treatment for rosacea that's not covered by insurance, unfortunately, is um, pulse dye laser for the redness. And, you know, that's considered a minimally invasive cosmetic procedure. And people with rosacea sought out that treatment not only to feel better about themselves, but for the express purpose of being able to live and, and function in their day-to-day -day life without having to wear makeup to cover up their rosacea. And it's, it's crazy to me because, you know, 
Rosacea is one of those diseases where putting on makeup can really, really flare it quite a bit and exacerbate it. I mean, it's, a, it's an inherent sensitivity to stuff that you're putting on your face. So people are not only motivated to like not feel like crap about themselves because they have this horrible skin condition, but you know, they also want to be able to, to manage it by not having to put makeup on it to, to go about their day-to-day -day life. So I thought that was really interesting that you know, kind of the motivations for seeking that in rosacea patients. And really what it tells me is that, you know, we need to make, these treatments need to be more affordable to people because the other thing that the study revealed is that people, the timing with which people choose to uh, seek cosmetic treatments is largely influenced by their ability to afford them, um, you know, by cost. So people are probably more likely to pursue pursue laser treatment for their rosacea, for example, maybe when they're in a, in a situation where they can actually afford it, which is scary because they're going all that time putting makeup on their face and battling it and having to buy makeup that stings and irritates and, you know, feeling poorly about themselves to delay a treatment that could just mitigate the redness quite a bit and let them go on about their lives. It's really, you know, that's really unfortunate. And, it was an interesting study. Um, the people who, people though, who seek microdermabrasion, they were kind of more in the fickle category of people who are like, when they, you know, like, what's your motivation for for wanting microdermabrasion? They're like, I don't know. I hear it's good. Everybody's doing. It. So they were kind of like the the keeping up with Kardashians crew because microdermabrasion. I mean, it's like, like I, I don't know. Do you want fries with that? It really does very there are very few things that it really is super helpful for and I mean it's not like a, a game changer it's not like pulse dye laser for redness and rosacea for example that can really be a game changer for somebody's quality of life but the microdermabrasion thing is just kind of like you know um, so that was more that was more people who were like I heard it's good I want to get it too kind of thing Happy Halloween! I got this adorable card in the mail. Thank you so much. This individual has sent me cards before and he always has the best stamps. He's a uh, fellow crafter, rubber stamps. Going on the bulletin board. Oh, update on my plastic bag. I call it plastic bag. I refuse to say vegan leather. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm more than happy that we're not, you know, using animal flesh here. But um, I just think it's funny that that leather is not called vegan leather. Anyways, it is not. It is not that wonderful of a bag. It's like the thing I don't care about, care for about it, uh, is that it's so floppy. It doesn't sit up straight. You know, it doesn't stand. It flops around. It falls over. Your stuff will fall out. I, the the design is just not it's not great and um it looks nice though but it's it's a little awkward so i would definitely have had buyer's remorse if i had purchased this i mean i wouldn't have purchased it i know myself i would have looked at it and been like oh that's nice i don't need it um but i'm long story short i'm using it happy to have it because i have a bag now whereas if i didn't have this i wouldn't buy one so i would be bagless and it's helpful for carrying you guys around <laughs> and my wallet but if you're curious about it i i would not recommend buying it i would have had buyer's remorse for sure but speaking of not having buyer's remorse a place i never have buyer's remorse i'm headed there now Ask no, i'm here and i'm scoring a cost scoring a uh, shopping cart here I don't have to go to the corral. I just reapplied a little Elta MD UV sport. What would Vlogtober be without uh, some uh, <laughs> Christmas decor, right? <laughs> I wanted to show you guys this last week, but there was a crowd over here. I love these uh, light up deer. I think they're so pretty. The LED ones, I have these every year. I think they look really nice on people's yards. <laughs> This cute, this cute little tree is, is kind of Charlie Brown sweet. You look at that as a uh, that would go good in my uh, closet slash room with the uh, with that birch the birch tree wallpaper. I can keep that out all year long. This is a little much. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. It's kind of a massive nativity here for 90 bucks. Uh, 
Um, this little Christmas village. I love mini Christmas villages. We had one of these under our Christmas tree when I was growing up. And you guys remember my mom's Department 56. Is it Department 56? I think she has. Her Christmas village. We used to put one of that or a version of that under our Christmas tree with a, a little train. So I just sampled this Rojos Tomatillo Avocado Salsa and it is really good. Um, unfortunately, like most, it's gluten free, it's vegan, but unfortunately, like most, says it is it is pretty salty I think two tablespoons has like 10% of your daily sodium so it's a bit heavy I imagine this brand is also I think this is garden fresh I've had this before it's really good but also pretty salty and I'm here at good old subway having my salad sandwich which is lettuce spinach green bell pepper black olives tomato cucumber on the um, six inch Italian white bread but Subway hack. Okay, see this paper? If you order your sandwich to have it in the restaurant, they will make the sandwich on this paper. And then, if you don't intervene quickly, they throw this paper away and put a new paper underneath it. It's the most wasteful thing ever. Not only do they waste a piece of paper, because you know they're not recycling that paper that goes down there, but there's lots of veggie fallout that lands on, the, on this paper that they make that they make the sandwich on that you lose if, if you let them throw it away. So that is a subway hack, intervene on that. You've gotta act quickly though, because they'll go fast. Once they ask you if you want it for here to go, if you don't say it immediately, they'll just default throw it away. I don't know if that's all subways, but it's this one. Um, <laughs> they look at me like I'm crazy, but. But then again, my sandwich order also is a little strange, I imagine, so. And the fact that I talk to myself in the camera when I come in here, I'm, I'm sure also that I'm like, oh god, here she comes. So here's the Physician's Formula Beauty Balm BB Cream that I'm trying out. And I like, I mean, I've used it in the past. I shouldn't say I'm trying it out as if it's the first time. But I'm going to review it for you guys soon. I haven't seen this Insta-Ready one, though. I wonder what the difference between this is. I, remember, I recall looking carefully at the ingredients on one of them, and I think they have, one, one of them maybe has fragrance. I'm not sure how that one differs. The problem is they don't have very many shades. Ew, that looks irritating. <laughs> this is more in the realm of makeup. But you guys, oh here's the mineral wear stuff, the powders. They have they have more shades than the powders, but SPF 16 for these. I think the one I have is 30, I want to say. Um, buy these on Walgreens.com and use Ebates. Um, Ebates is having a dealio right now, I think, uh, where you can get like 7% cash back, so you'll get a lot. All right, so from Costco, first of all, I got these splendid lounge bras. They looked promising. Uh, I've been happy with the Gloria Vanderbilt bras that I got at Costco, but their coverage, I think that like on the model, this is probably a little bit graphic, but on the model, just for example, the Gloria Vanderbilt bra cup comes like all the way up to, up to the collarbone, which is fine, but it doesn't work with many shirts. So I wanted to give these a try. They look promising. Update though, I've really been loving my Fabletics uh, sports bras, the two that I got. I'm thinking of ordering more from those because the, the quality has been really, really fantastic. But we'll give Splendid a try. And I'm going to be going out of town next week, so I elected to forego my uh, usual five serving bag of fresh and quick spinach. But this won't go bad while I'm gone. These are the Wild Mushroom Co. I've been really loving the Fungus Among Us dried mushrooms that I got on iHerb, but they're pretty pricey. Um, however, this was a lovely deal and I imagine it will not be around forever. Packed in France. This is gonna be good. I'm really excited for this. Uh, because I'm going out of town, I went ahead and got some uh, Vias. These are the uh, co uh, Costco, the Starbucks uh, instant coffees. Ugh. These to me taste far better than anything I've ever got in Starbucks, to be honest. Uh, sometimes if I'm in a pinch and I'm in an area and I have to go into a Starbucks, I will just buy these in Starbucks and ask for a cup to put boiling water in rather than drink whatever garbage they, they serve me because this is at least consistently good. 
Whereas the brewed coffee in Starbucks sometimes tastes, yuck, for lack of a better word. That was a word, yes. All right, I got another box of six cartons of the unsweetened almond milk. I've only consumed, I think, two or three, only like two and a half of the ones that I purchased last week. But uh, because I was going light on groceries this week, I figured I'd go ahead and get it, save myself a following week from having to lug this in. It was just kind of a why not. Um, in lieu of spinach, I got two heads of iceberg lettuce. I have no issue eating that really quickly. I know it has little nutritive value, but sometimes it's just fun to eat foods. They don't have to, have to necessarily have a purpose. I also got two yellow onions. And I got more parsnips this week. Update, parsnips in the air fryer, not as good as carrots in the air fryer, but parsnips sliced up and put into the Kosari or slow cooker on the slow cook setting in a veggie broth are really, really lovely. Got some more radishes. Speaking of air fryer recipes, I was, oh, that's one thing I was gonna try that one of you mentioned for the air fryer was just plain Brussels sprouts. And I had that on my, in my brain to, to get, and I, I didn't get them. But maybe next, maybe next time. And then I got some more turnips. Loving these over rutabaga for sure. Uh, they, the, this, this blends really nicely as far as a slow cooker. This, an onion, garlic, and that powdered tomato powder I have from iHerb or, you know, just tomato sauce. Really nice, really nice base. And I got another head of cauliflower. I don't know, maybe I just have to say goodbye to Costco's inventory of organic rice cauliflower. They haven't had it in so many months now and I've, I've practically forgotten about it. Shut a tear. <laughs> they finally got some more unsweetened applesauce in the jar versus the little individual containers at Kroger. This is an odd thing that I noticed. So you can buy this exact same container of applesauce at Kroger that is sweetened and they cost the same. You also can buy this container that is both sweetened and with cinnamon added that costs the same. I think Kroger is, is shafting me because there are one to two fewer ingredients that they have to put in this as opposed to the others that I am paying for. So what's up with that, crow hair? <laughs> just kidding, it's not really that big of a deal. Um, it just goes to show you that high fructose corn syrup must cost like a fraction of a penny for them to infiltrate into things. <laughs> All right, and then I got another box of the True Lemon Lemonade Sticks, love these. This is a strawberry flavor. Last week I think I got the wild berry flavor. And <laughs> Fun fact, <laughs> Ibotta paid me four cents to take this banana off of Kroger's hands. <laughs> Ibotta had 25 cents cash back on any banana purchase. And you know, I, I like bananas, but I don't really, I don't know. I go through phases with them, but I was like, well, why not? And this single banana was like 20 something cents. So I ended up getting, getting a few pennies for just taking it out of the store, which is always a win. And then I got two packets of Trident gum, even though I try and try and watch my gum habit. Plus, if I chew gum on camera and I have to go back and edit the footage, or when I go back and edit the footage, it is the most painful thing to witness. So it's really you guys have really helped me not chew so much gum. You don't even know it because it's just it's so disgusting to see a gum in your own mouth. And we've got we've got the candy corn candle going back there. I relit that just now. It wasn't burning the whole day while I was gone, <laughs> in case you were curious. Update though on that fragrance by Tuscany Candle, the candy, candy, cane, candy, cane, candy corn fragrance. Really nice, I recommend it. Although they didn't have it at Kroger when I, today. They, they are pretty much out of all of their Halloween candles. They do still have some Halloween wax melts. And they had a, they actually had a small jar candle I was really tempted to get of a um, maple pancake jar candle that smelled wonderful. It was, I think, $6.39. It smelled really good. I was tempted to get it, but I have fall harvest um, Tuscany candle next. And then by the time I, I get through that, um, we can decide if I need another autumnal one or if we'll be ready to ready to seg in the Christmas sense. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed Erin Day and you liked this vlog. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe.